It was a chilly night in Colorado when this happened, back in 1987. I had just wrapped up a session with a client, and I was locking up the office for the night. As a psychologist, I have studied every aspect of the human brain and its functions, particularly those affecting behavior. My particular specialty is in developmental psychology, which allows me to see a wide range of patients from infants to adults. In all my years of training and research, I have never seen anything so unreal, so disturbing as what was waiting for me in the alleyway that night. My keys clanged loudly in the stillness of the night. I remember there was a strange mist rolling in and the moon was shining down. After the door to my office was securely locked, I slid the keys into my pocket and started walking to my little red sedan that was just around the corner on the other side of the building. I started down the sidewalk and froze in place as I heard metal collide against metal. For some reason, I'm not honestly sure why, perhaps propelled by my own foolish curiosity. I turned to glance over my shoulder. That's when I saw it. Fear is a funny thing. It can take even the most intelligent people and turn them into curious fools. I remember walking toward it. At first, I thought it was a stray dog, rummaging through the garbage cans in search of food. Being more of a cat person myself, I was disgusted with the behavior, but seeing as dogs were fairly harmless, I thought I might simply shoo it away. I continued toward the canine with extreme caution. Having been bitten by a neighbor's dog as a young child, I was slightly fearful, and for good reason. The average bite force of a canine is roughly 230 to 250 PSI. I remember researching it shortly after the attack. I suspect it had more to do with me smelling like my kitten than anything else. Animals usually loved me. Despite having one bad experience, I didn't hate dogs. I just preferred cats. The head that whipped up to look at me from the round metal can was anything but dangerous. It had a squarish face, chestnut in color with a shock of white in between a pair of mesmerizing yellow eyes. Two floppy ears stood partially erect on both sides of its head. The nose was jet black on the end of a stubby snout. A dash of pink had been rubbed across the front of his muzzle, along with a sprinkling of grayish black spots that appeared to have been almost painted on the white portion of its short fur. I've never been very good at identifying dog breeds, but I knew of a few, and this one was definitely a pit bull. It appeared so similar to the one that had bitten me as a child. I could never forget that face. I stepped forward a bit and was now much closer to it, maybe a good seven feet away when suddenly the dog tipped itself upright onto its back legs and I saw a human torso on its upper body, presumably male, given the chest hair and build. He was tall, maybe eight or nine feet high. The muscles and rib cage were well defined and I found my own brain bumbling for a logical explanation to the existence of such a beast. When my mind couldn't figure it out, I simply screamed. I didn't mean to be so loud. The scream itself must have echoed for miles. The creature let out a loud howl. It was an awful sound, sort of like a human dying a brutal death mixed with some sort of pit bull vocal cords. I thought I was going to die. It was logical to assume an impending attack was inevitable. As I ran in fright, I stumbled over my feet. My hands caught the brunt of my weight, and I felt my skin along the underside of my hands as it slid across the rough ground in between the buildings. The creature slowly approached me, well balanced, on his hind legs. It was the strangest sight I had ever seen. From the midsection down, the human torso became that of a dog again. Genetically, the whole makeup was wrong. It forced me to question everything I had been taught in school. As its massive head drew nearer to mine, I squeezed my eyes shut, preparing for the worst. My muscles tensed all throughout my body. I felt my heart rate begin to race in my chest. Then, much to my surprise, I felt hot breath on my face. But when I opened my eyes, the creature was nowhere. What was odd about it, though, is that despite the silence, I didn't even hear him leave. I glanced around, but there was no other sign of life. For a few moments, I attempted to wrap my brain around the experience, 
Logically, I couldn't formulate a conclusion. I started to wonder if I had imagined the whole thing. But without allowing myself to think too much, I then pushed myself up to my feet and ran as fast as I could to my vehicle, which was a bit of a feat to pull off in high heels. I was lucky neither of them broke off as I rushed to the car. How could I possibly be certain the creature wouldn't come back for me for dinner later? Anyway, I wasn't sticking around to find out. I pulled shut the door and locked it securely. Then I jammed my keys into the ignition, flipped the car in reverse and shot out of the parking lot. I never looked back. When I was a teenager, I became friends with a new girl in school. She had just moved to our small town in eastern Tennessee and lived about a mile away from me. After we had been friends for a month or so, she invited me over for a sleepover. The first thing we did is she gave me a tour of her house, and then she showed me the best part. She had an awesome treehouse in her backyard, just inside the stand of trees at the edge of the property. It was a proper treehouse, too not just a few boards making a platform. It was about 15 feet off the ground, accessible only by a rope ladder. It had four walls and a roof and these little windows. It was just tall enough for us to stand up straight. There were a couple of camping chairs in there and a lantern, but that was it. Of course, we slept out there that night. We brought our sleeping bags and some snacks up into the treehouse and told scary stories and gossiped about boys in school. It was like something from a movie, and I loved it. I felt super cool. Over the next year, we slept out there at least once a month unless it was too cold or raining too hard. We fixed it up a little more, adding posters and a little carpet. It was our private hideout. Almost a year later, I came over for our regular sleepover, and we got ready to head to the treehouse. But her dad stopped us. He tried to talk us into sleeping in the house, but we had our hearts set on the treehouse. He argued with us for a while before he told us what the problem was. There was word in the neighborhood of some wild animal on the loose. At first, everyone thought it was just an animal messing around in the garbage cans and with the stuff in the yard. Then a neighbor found a dead fox in his yard, gored to death. They had been hearing some howling for the last week, so they thought it might be a coyote or wolf. Her dad didn't want us sleeping outside until they caught it, or knew for sure that it was gone. We tried arguing that we would be way off the ground and we'd be fine, but he wouldn't budge. We went back to her room, sulking. Of course, we waited until her parents were asleep and snuck out anyway. Once we were up in the treehouse, we pulled the ladder up, just to be safe. But we weren't scared of an animal. We were young and naive. The night progressed as it usually did, we talked, painted our nails, ate chips and cookies, and listened to music. Around 2 a.m., we turned off the lantern and went to bed. I had just fallen asleep when something woke me up. I wasn't sure what, until I felt it again. The treehouse was shaking. I woke my friend up, and she looked at me totally confused until it happened again. It was like the tree was moving. I thought it might be a really strong wind making it sway but I couldn't hear any wind at all. We didn't move or speak. We just sat up and listened and waited. The movement continued every few seconds, a subtle shifting feeling. I had a terrible thought that it felt like someone was climbing our tree. My mind went to a psycho murderer first, having already forgotten about the animal on the loose. I was so sure that no animal big enough to hurt us could get up into the tree. And then we started hearing sounds, little rustling sounds, like something moving in the leaves around us. The worst sound was the screeching sound, like nails on a chalkboard. It sounded vaguely like the noise the branches made on the outer walls during a strong wind, but it was much worse. We clutched each other, scared to death. The three little windows had makeshift shutters to keep the rain out, and luckily we had shut those just before we went to bed. In the past, we had woken up to birds and squirrels in the treehouse more than once and had learned our lesson, but that meant it was almost pitch black inside, without the lantern or flashlights lit. There was just the faintest moonlight coming in through the gaps in the shutters. 
After several long minutes, we started whispering to each other. We had no idea what to do. We weren't sure who or what might be in the tree, and we didn't want to open the door or windows to look, but we were basically sitting ducks inside. Eventually, the sounds and shaking stopped. It had been silent and still for maybe 10 minutes when we made a plan to leave the treehouse and sneak back into the house. It wasn't fun anymore. We were way too creeped out to ever fall back asleep out there. We gathered up our stuff and tried not to make any noise. Then, before we opened the trap door and dropped the ladder, I talked my friend into opening a window to look out. I wasn't sure what it would accomplish, but it seemed like a better idea than blundering into the darkness. She turned on a flashlight, and we stood on either side of the window. At the count of three, she unlatched it, opened it wide. We both screamed bloody murder. We were face to face with a monster. It was silently clinging to the branches next to the treehouse. It felt as if it was lying in wait. It was big and dark. The long limbs were wrapped around the tree, and its sharp talons dug into the bark. At first glance, it might have been easy to mistake it for a wolf, but it definitely wasn't. The face and snout were similar, but the body looked human, but hairy. And then there were the eyes. They were staring at us in a way that we knew it understood our thoughts and sense our fear. We slammed the window, locked it, and cowered on the floor, screaming, until we heard her dad calling for us. He coaxed us down and out of the treehouse, half mad we didn't listen and half terrified that we were in such danger. We tried explaining the thing we'd seen in the tree, saying it was almost the body of a human, but he acted like he thought we were exaggerating some normal animal, thinking it had been the one on the prowl, and that we had just been groggy and out of it. Anyway, the animal sighting stopped a few weeks later, but we never slept in the treehouse again. A couple of weeks ago, I saw something I can't explain. Even now, I don't know how to think or feel about it. I come from a town that is up in the mountains in Colorado, so wildlife is a common, everyday thing there. Bear, deer, and coyote would come down to the neighborhoods to search through trash cans or just roam around the streets. We would even see mountain lions, but not as often. But around wintertime, more than any other animal, you would see the coyotes. You would never see more than two at a time, and generally, they were no threat. As long as you waved your arms and yelled, it was enough to scare them off. During the winter, I would feed my dogs and take them for a walk before it was too dark, usually around seven at night. I wanted to avoid other people who might also be walking their pets. My dogs weren't exactly the most behaved or well-trained, especially when they're around other dogs or people. They're both rescues and I'm not sure of their past situation, but I'm thinking it was pretty bad. They would almost always make a scene, like barking or trying to lunge at other dogs if they were close. It would be stressful for me, so to avoid the hassle, I tried to avoid people whenever possible. And as a precaution, I would carry a stun gun that I had bought. No reason other than to have some protection. I never had to use it and hoped that I never would. Anyway, this particular night, I was headed back home with my dogs. Typically, I would walk around the block once or twice. On this night, one of my dogs was constantly turning to look back at something. When I would turn to look too, I saw nothing. Any noise would usually grab their curiosity, but I just needed to call their name and they would continue walking. The street was wide, lined with parked cars, with a few street lights. But it can get pretty dark on that street. Visibility sometimes was totally non-existent. While my dogs were sniffing around by a tree, I saw something behind a van parked across the street, peeking its head over the top from the other side. When I noticed it, it retreated back quickly, but then peeked its head out again. It was another dog checking us out. It looked like a German shepherd, dark hair with long snout. It definitely didn't look like a coyote. They were typically light gray and thin. Figuring it had run away or gotten lost, I took the chance and tried calling it over to see if it had a collar. 
but when I started calling for it, the dog retreated back pretty quickly. I kept calling for it, but it stayed hidden behind the van. I decided that it couldn't be too far from home, so the owners would probably be searching for it. I finally gave up and decided to continue walking home, but one of my dogs continued to glance back to where we had seen it. As I walked, I started thinking about the dog. Something about it was different. The thing that really stuck in my mind was its eyes. Bright, yellow eyes. I figured it was maybe a mixed breed, maybe part wolf or something. When my dog stopped again to sniff, I looked up and there it was again, hidden behind some closer cars, peering around the back bumper. I tried to see if I could get it to come to me, but instead it began growling, exposing its teeth. My dogs went on to high alert and started to whimper and cry. They were scared, not aggressive. It was weird. Then the dog slowly moved from behind the van and slunk towards me. It was much bigger than I thought, but I was having a hard time seeing clearly because it was hidden by the shadows. I started getting nervous. My dogs were afraid and this dog was getting hostile. So I took out my taser and let out a couple buzzes, which usually worked with coyotes. It stopped for a split second, but wasn't deterred at all. It continued walking in my direction. I started waving my arms around, screaming, trying to make myself big. The dog stopped again. Just then the animal stood up on its hind legs and I was shocked. This was not a dog at all. It was massive, easily eight feet tall and it started walking towards me on two legs. I couldn't move. Every instinct was telling me to run and to get away, but I was petrified by this huge creature in front of me. It was not a dog and it wasn't a human either. It had the body of a man but the head of a dog, with a wolf-like face. The creature stared at me and didn't flinch as it moved stealth-like towards me. Its eyes were glowing red and its mouth was open. Foam was dripping from its three-inch fangs. My dogs were now going completely crazy. Just then, headlights started coming down the street towards us. The creature took one look at the lights and fled on all fours into one of the back alleys. The people in the car didn't see what I saw. The driver asked if I was okay, but I couldn't get the words out. I just nodded my head up and down. They told me not to stay out too late, warning me that there are wild animals that come down from the mountains at night. Then he drove off. It took me a while to regain myself, and I ran back home. Since that night, I've made it a habit to walk my dogs only on my street, or I keep them in my front yard but never after dark. When I think back on it, something that bothered me most was its mouth, its exposed fangs dripping with drool. When the headlights reached the dog, and for that brief second when I got a good look at it, it looked like it was smiling at me. I'm a beekeeper from central Michigan, been doing it for about 20 years now, mostly as a hobby, but I do sell some honey at local markets too. Never thought I'd have a story like this to tell. It was early March, and still cold in these parts. I was checking on my hives after winter. I keep them on the edge of my property, near some woods. It was late afternoon, getting close to sunset. The air was crisp, and there was still some patchy snow on the ground. As I approached the hives, I noticed something had happened to them. Two of them were knocked over, frames scattered all over. At first, I thought maybe some kids had vandalized them, and I was on the verge of being super angry, but then I saw the claw marks. They were deep, gouging right through the wood. Some of the marks were over an inch wide and several inches long. This was not the work of kids. I figured it must have been a bear, though I'd never seen one around here before. I started picking up the frames, seeing if I could salvage anything. The bees were agitated, buzzing around more than usual for the cool weather. That's when I heard this weird noise from the woods, sort of a mix between a whine and a cough. I looked up and saw this thing. It was hunched over by a tree, maybe 50 feet away, big as a horse but shaped all wrong. It didn't match anything I knew of, it had this long snout, kind of like a German shepherd, but the body was more like a person's. 
It was covered in fur, looked mangy and patchy. The fur was a dirty grayish brown color and in some spots I could see pale skin underneath. The weirdest part was its paws. They were more like hands with opposable thumbs and they were covered in honey and dead bees. It was licking them clean, making that strange coughing noise every so often. I could see its long tongue, almost purple in color, lapping at the sticky mess. I just stood there, frozen. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It noticed me watching and looked right at me. Its eyes were glowing, but not like a normal animal's eyes in the light. They were glowing from inside, a dull red color. The glow seemed to pulse slightly, like a slow heartbeat. For a moment, we just stared at each other. I could hear it breathing, heavy and ragged. Its breath came out in steamy puffs in the cold air. Then it stood up on its hind legs. It must have been eight feet tall, at least. Its arms hung down to its knees, ending in those bizarre hand paws. It opened its mouth and made this sound, not a growl or a howl, but almost like it was trying to talk. It came out as this garbled, deep noise that made my chest vibrate. I could see rows of sharp teeth, stained yellow and brown. There were bits of honeycomb stuck between them. I started backing away slowly. It watched me go, but didn't follow. Just stood there, making that noise. Its ears were perked up, swiveling like it was listening for something. As I got to my truck, I heard a loud crash. When I looked back, it was gone, and another hive was knocked over. The whole encounter probably only lasted a few minutes, but it felt like hours. I sat in my truck for a while, trying to process what I'd seen. The sun was setting, casting long shadows through the trees. I could have sworn I saw movement in those shadows, but I didn't stick around to find out. I reported it to the local police and wildlife service. They said it was probably just a bear, but I know what I saw. It wasn't any bear. The officer looked at me like I was crazy when I mentioned the glowing eyes and hand-like paws. Since then, I've moved my hives closer to the house. I've tried setting up game cameras to catch it on film, but they always end up smashed or with the memory cards wiped clean. Sometimes at night, I hear that coughing sound from the woods, and every now and then, I find big, oddly shaped footprints by the hives, covered in honey. The prints are huge, easily twice the size of my foot, with clear imprints of those strange fingers. I don't know what that thing was. Some kind of dog man, I guess. But why was it so interested in my bees? And what was it trying to say to me? Was it just a random encounter? Or has it been watching my hives for a while? I'm still keeping bees, but now I'm always watching the woods, wondering if it's out there, waiting to come back for more honey. I've started carrying a gun when I check the hives, but deep down, I'm not sure it would do much good against a creature like that. The weirdest thing is, ever since that day, my bees have been producing more honey than ever before. And the honey, it tastes different. Sweeter, with a strange aftertaste I can't quite place. Sometimes I wonder if that thing did something to my hives, changed them somehow, but that's crazy talk, right? All I know is, the woods don't feel the same anymore. Every snapped twig, every rustle in the bushes makes me jump. And every time I taste my honey, I remember those glowing eyes and wonder when I'll see them again.